Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Let's apply Laplace transforms. Finally, it took so long. I'm terribly sorry. I'm a lazy fuck. So, we want to discuss the Laplace transform of a rope sliding down table. If you don't know where this formula comes from, take a look in the description. There will be a link to the corresponding video. Okay, so before starting off, we want to transform this kind of into the Laplace transform term. <laughs> so let's start off by defining this as the second derivative of some time dependent function and that's just a time dependent function. So at first that's equivalent to the statement of f double prime of t equals to g over l times f of t. So that's the same statement, it's completely the same just to bring some, um, I don't know, some convention to this whole thing. Just make it clear for every step where it comes from. Never mind. If you don't know any of the Laplace transform identities, just take a look in the description. There will be links to the corresponding videos as always on my channel. It's always that way. And now we want to apply the Laplace transform to this thing. So that means the Laplace transform of f double prime of t equals to g over l f of t. Well, what is that? It's quite easy. We just have to use all the identities we've gathered before. So this is s squared capital F of s minus s f of zero minus f prime of zero. And this is now equal to g over l times capital F of s. And now we haven't discussed inverse Laplace transforms before, but this capital F of S right here would be the solution to our differential equation, X in terms of T. So what we want to do? We want to isolate this F of S on one side and bring all the other stuff to the other side. So let's just do that and see what we get. So we could subtract this on the side, factor out the S squared and the minus G over L and bring all the stuff to the other side. So let's see what we get at first. So that means we get capital F of S times S squared minus G over L. So that's great. And bring this to the other side. Let's add it on both sides. So that's S, F of zero and positive F prime of zero. And now we have to divide by this term so that we get capital F of S on one side. So this is now equivalent to F in terms of S equals to S F of zero plus f prime of zero over s squared minus g over l. So that's great. Okay, and now we want to apply the inverse Laplace transform to both sides. So let's do this. The inverse Laplace transform is denoted like that. Laplace transform to the minus one kind of of capital F of s. Well, what's that? Like I said before, it's the solution to our differential equation. So that would be x in terms of t. Or maybe just f in terms of t, some time dependent function. Okay, and this is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of s f of zero plus f prime of zero over s squared minus g over l. And that's great. So here are a few facts. Just like the regular Laplace transform, the inverse Laplace transform is defined like a Fourier uh, transform, so it's kind of a sum. So we can use linearity on that. So we could break this up into two inverse Laplace transforms. Let's do this at first. Well, 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 here's the hardest part about Laplace transforms. Sometimes when it gets really complicated, you have to think about what the inverse Laplace transform of some, well, of some expression is. So sometimes you have to multiply by a, a one pretty cleverly or something like this. In this case, it's quite easy. And since it's just an introduction, let's do it. Okay, so since we can use the linearity, we can bring out those f of zero and f prime of zero to the outside because those are just constants when it comes to the inverse Laplace transform. So rewrite this as f of zero 
times the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared minus g over l. Okay, that's the first part. And then positive f prime of 0 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared minus g over l. And sometimes, uh, when you are a physicist, it's useful to check for the dimensions, for the units. So x in terms of t is a distance in this case. So it's a distance that's dependent on time. So that's something with meters, inches or whatsoever. So we have to get something with meters, inches on that side. Let's take a look at here. f of zero is just a distance. So that thing right here shouldn't have any unit at all. And we kind of know what that is because this right here is nearly the hyperbolic cosine of some argument. But there's something missing here. We need something squared right here. So this expression squared. How can we get that without changing anything? Well, what we could do, we could take the square root of this expression, but the whole thing squared. It wouldn't change anything. Okay, so at first, that was quite easy. That's f of zero times the hyperbolic cosine of, and this is square root g over l times t. That's the ex expression. Like I said before, you have to um, think about units and you have to play around a bit cleverly. So that's the first part. Okay, that's great. We've solved that. And right here. So we need to get meters right here or inches whatsoever. But f prime of zero, what is that? If we, if we think about, about the units, that is meters per second. So we have to multiply by seconds. So this needs to have the unit of seconds right here, a time unit. So how can we get that? Hmm. This right here is nearly the hyperbolic sign, but we have to play around a little bit more. Um, we could transform it like this at first. So this is the square root g over l, but the whole thing squared. But to get the hyperbolic sign, we also need this argument right here in the numerator. Okay, um, but how could we do that? Well, here's just a one up here. So it wouldn't hurt us at all if we change this expression one to something else. So that's the square root of l over g times the square root of g over l. And as you might notice, this right here, what are the units of this thing? Well, that's the square root of meters over meters per, per uh, square second. So that would be, well, meters gets canceled away. So that's the square root of uh, seconds squared. So that's just seconds. That's the unit of time. That's what we really need. So you can use the units as a little reference. And we can bring this term to the outside. And well, this right here would just end up as, okay, so this is f prime of zero times the square root L over G times the hyperbolic sign of square root G over L times T. It's not always obvious what you have to use. You have to play around with the expressions, just like you would play around with your woman at home. That wasn't appropriate at all. Never mind, we solved the differential equation and this is the most general form of the um, differential equation you could get in any case. And let's take a look at the example we had before with initial values. So at first we said that x of zero will be called x naught and x prime of zero it's just zero. We could plug that in. So x prime of zero is this expression right here. So that would cancel out completely. So that would become zero. And if we plug in x of zero equals to x naught, well, that's just x naught times the hyperbolic cosine of that thing right here. And then we are done. So it does fit with our um, Newtonian mechanical system initial value um, differential equation. So that's great. And yeah, that was the first application of Laplace Transform. If you did like this video, please like and subscribe, recommend me if you like, support me on Patreon if you want, link in the description. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya.